down to Dash and Crew. Thank you, gentlemen. There is so much to talk about here because we set up so much, and then so much of it went differently than we may have assumed. I want to start with picks and bans. Jungle with Gragas out. We saw Origin go and try and pinch the jungle. Bengi decided to show them that he can play Jarvan. Yeah, I think the pick and ban revealed a lot about these teams. Uh, I actually do like what Origin did in the pick and ban phase by banning out the junglers. And because by doing that, they actually force SKT into either banning the OPs or trading things. And the reason I think this is interesting is throughout this entire tournament, it's kind of been the Mordekaiser and Gangplank. But if we consider the picks that were huge in the quarterfinals, Tom Kench, Lulu, it starts to extend. SKT didn't want to trade one for two even if they had the first pick. So by banning out the junglers on the red side, they actually made SKT make a pretty decisive choice, and SKT did end up limiting their options a little bit. Well, I think the choices Origin made were because they had to once they first banned the lease. Once you ban a lease, you no longer have two bans left. You're going to ban Rek'Sai, or you're going to give them a free Rek'Sai. So once SKT started banning out the regular purple side bans, I think they're like, well, we kind of already dug ourselves in this Elise ban, so we have to keep going with it. And that kind of, like, flowed for their pick and ban, even though they didn't want it. Right, and what this ended up doing was giving SK Telecom many of their comfort picks. I mean, we talk about Easy Hoon. We associate him with Azir. We talk about Bang. He is now 13-0 professionally, undefeated on Callista. And so these kind of picks coming through, when you can't throw these more targeted bands out, they're going to get the comfort picks. Yeah, I mean, it's the nature of being on red side. I still like what Origin did because you don't have many options. Like, they can't then ban out Azir and Fjord because then they're giving them the pick of the litter jungler and a trade of OP. Well, like, it just their, work. their decision was good. Like, they had yeah. to give up the power picks. They realized that. So they picked the counter picks. Like, although Victor isn't a counter pick to Azir, he can do well. The attempted but, counter picks. But the Kinnon into a Fjord, I think, is great. I think the Tristana into Callista is great as well. So if you're going to have to be giving up these picks, at least have something in your pocket to play against it. Let's take a look at how that manifested in the game as we look at SKT grabbing that victory. We saw the lane swap come through looked rather in favor of Origin as they had a quick push with Tristana, but they decided to leave so as in the long lane following the initial turret falling. I think this was Tunnel Vision Incarnate. So they get the counter picks on Callista, <laughs> they get it on Fiora, and they go, okay, we can lane 2v2 and 1v1, yay. But they don't realize, like, Tristana's going to auto-push, so they can't really freeze that lane when normally when you lane swap, you get a frozen lane and a lane that you have to defreeze. So now they're sitting in a lane that they don't get to freeze, and they have to de-push top. But, like we said in Origin, likes to send their jungler bot lane. Eve goes bot. Kennen is alone top. Poor guy. With no wards With in the no river. With no wards in the river. And even if he did, they're just going to chase him down the lane and keep freezing it. There's nothing that you can do in that situation as a solo lane, like top laner. Like, you have to have your jungler. You have to have your support. So I think they tunneled really hard on the counter picks and abusing them, and they didn't realize that it kind of like, destroys how 2v1s are played. And I actually think the outplay that Soaz did to stay alive <laughs> did a lot to save Origin's early game and ended up giving them a bit of an advantage because they spent so much time chasing around Soaz for no total gold gain. Meanwhile, Amazing got, like, a 15 or 20 CS advantage while he was not having presence in the lanes, and that did give them a mid-game spike, but that actually really shouldn't have happened unless Soaz makes that ridiculous escape. Yeah, yeah and but later as the game progressed, I mean, we saw a 100-plus CS difference for Marin because it was SK Telecom, we, we talked about how they can increase these gold leads, how they are very good at assigning lanes uh, and making sure they get all of that gold, and so they really started pulling ahead in farm over time. No, it was funny. We had these statistics coming into the day where SKT averages at 20 minutes a 4K gold lead and Origin averages down 160 gold at 20 minutes per that graph that we showed. Well, today in this game one, Origin was up 700 gold at that 20 minute mark with, you know, with that, and then followed that up with that amazing Baron call at 23 minutes. I think Origin played really well this game. I was very impressed by their play on the map. They did the same thing against KT, if you remember in the game in the group stages, trying to take this early Baron. And I mean, this is right after we did see SKT sort of win a scrap and they had an opportunity to get some wards down, but they really didn't respect Origin. Uh, this is all dark, as you can see right now. So it made it a very easy, very good Baron call for Origin. Yeah, and these are the types of games I like to watch because, yeah, you can make an argument that SKT should have had vision of this Baron, or they should have had early wards down, but so many of these plays weren't big misplays. They were just the other team taking advantage of opportunity, even at the very end of the game. 
when Origin was trying to kill the split pushing Fjord in the top lane. I think that was the best play they could have made when they double teleported and get the Baron play. The execution of the play wasn't necessarily ideal and it didn't work out for them, but it was still a really well played uh, play. Now, so I want to really quickly break down then how it all fell back into SKT's favor because Origin, for all intents and purposes, was set up to win this game with what they were doing within the first 25 minutes. Well, I mean, the SK Telegram did have a very nice scaling composition, and that Fiora got so far ahead and so tanky. And I know that Jat wants to talk about the itemization a little bit <laughs> in this game because you felt very passionately about it. Yeah, so this was an Origin game. Origin pulled even with SKT, and then we actually got to see what SK looks like when they're challenged. Uh, they outplayed them with the split push, and I think Origin made some big itemization mistakes. Niels was snowballing the game pretty well, so he had his core three, Bloodthirster, Static Shiv, and Infinity Edge. And then I think he wanted the Scimitar in case Fiora tried to zero him out. But in doing so, by starting BF Sword, he delayed his item build so long that the rest of SKT saw the BF Sword, built Warden's Mail on three people, and Niels didn't have armor penetration, which neglected the opportunity for Origin to find the right team fights. And it's one of the big reasons SKT wasn't punished while they're split pushing. Well, a little bit of time for both of these teams to continue to rethink their strategies moving on to game two. We're going to take a quick break as Origin looks to bounce back and tie it up in game two. As we go, we'd like to give a shout out to Declan Wadey, who developed the skin spotlight camera tool you've seen in action throughout Worlds 2015. Don't touch that browser. The World Championship semifinals continue when we return. Game one of the semifinals, South Korea's SK Telecom T1 versus Europe's Origin. Running away through the wards, Pop Summoner teleport, oh! and the Swaggers! Oh! 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 is a god! Mithy is also already down, a three oh, man knockup! Oh. Beautiful, gets one back from Alistair, but Mithy is already dead. Wolf survives, Magic Big Mithy. I have a flash, I have a flash. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Can we go? Yeah, yeah, just throw it, we can. Back out, back out now. Yeah, maybe. He's there, he's there, he's there. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm here. But the slicing maelstrom buying a lot of time. One for one in this fight. Mithy gets a knockup onto Bang. And look at the damage output. Wolf and Bangy in pursuit. Peke goes down. The fight resumes 3v5. Soaz can't even kill off Easy Hoon. SK Telecom T1 are undefeated still in the world championship.